minutes and then we'll get cranked up here. Is everybody enjoying the conference? Have a good break? Learning a lot? Awesome. How many people are using Couchbase already? How many people are looking at, at moving to Couchbase? How many people have never heard of Couchbase before until you got here today? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's good. I think we got a few people who just came for that awesome lunch. I uh, know, right? <laughs> How about that food? That was pretty incredible, wasn't it? Yeah. Nice venue, nice food. And it stopped raining, so we've got sunny weather. Yeah. How about that? It's a good time. All right, well, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. As people go ahead and come on in, we'll welcome them. Uh, no issues. Um, my name is Dan Cutter. I'm the Director of Software Development at Center Edge Software. Uh, this is Brant Burnett. Uh, he's our lead uh, developer and programmer. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our journey with Couchbase. We're actually running a production version of, of Couchbase 4.0 right now. Uh, we were in the beta program with Couchbase, and so as we were baiting our new enterprise platform, Couchbase was baiting their code, and so we kind of took this journey together to production. They went to production today, and so our application is live in production today as well. Basically, we're going to cover just a very little bit about the company, a little bit about what we do and how we do it and why we do it. Uh, Brant's been with Center Edge. Uh, he's one of the, the four original programmers for the company. Um, and he's been with the company for about 11 years now, since the first days. Uh, I was brought on as the cloud architect uh, last July. And uh, just recently, about a month ago, I was promoted to director. So this is definitely, oh, oh thank you. Uh, <laughs> this is definitely the direction that the company's going, and it has a huge implication for the future and what Center Edge is becoming at this moment. So we're excited to share that. Um, Briefly, we service the entertainment industry, amusement parks, uh, water parks, uh, skating rinks, bowling alleys, large and small. Uh, we're seeing more and more franchising in our uh, business space, so more and more people are opening up more parks. They want to see their data across multiple parks, multiple countries. We've got sites in Canada, Mexico, Central America, all over Europe, uh, Hong Kong, Dubai. We're opening uh, some parks in Saudi Arabia. All around the world, these uh, entertainment people want to have fun. The kids want to have birthday parties. They want to take them and uh, let them have cake and have fun. And uh, it's, it's big business. Uh, we were uh, putting our stores online. Uh, and We had the same problem that many retailers had in that Black Friday came. They were selling all their passes, all their season passes, and it melted all of our servers. Our SQL servers melted. Our Amazon cloud melted, and we needed a better solution. So that's when we first looked to Couchbase to solve that problem. Uh, we then started using it to persist shopping carts. Had a lot of good success now. And then our uh, current platform is all Couchbase on the back end. It's no SQL, top to bottom. It's all cloud-based, and we're utilizing it to synchronize the information from our local on-premise systems into the cloud so that the man managers and the franchisees can look at their data and get a complete picture of their enterprise uh, from a digital dashboard in the cloud. So this is our 10-year anniversary. We're a team of 40 programmers in Roxboro, North Carolina. Uh, we have also an additional 40 or 50 techs and uh, 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 salesmen and things like that in the field. We're about an hour north of Research Triangle Park. Uh, so we've got a lot of good uh, talent there and uh, growing our businesses. We've got uh, 400 users across the U.S. and abroad, but that is a, really a small slice because we sell the software to the people that are running their amusement parks, and they in turn have hundreds of thousands of customers. So it, we have 400 large, I guess 500 because we've sold so many this year, but we have about 500 installs, and then those have hundreds of thousands of customers per site, and so their customers are our customers. We service water parks, trampoline parks, amusement parks, skating rinks, zoos, bowling centers, putt-putt golf, bowling alleys, all types of, of interesting uh, businesses. And I'd like Brant to take a few minutes to kind of talk to you all about exactly where the software is installed and how it's running and what it does. So uh, our goal as a company has always been to provide full facility software management. So we're not just one piece of your business. We manage the whole thing. Point of sale, group bookings, uh, time clock and employee scheduling, and uh, online ticket sales, and now online uh, corporate graphing and con data consolidation. So uh, it's very important to us to do all of those things and to be able to do all of them well. And that's kind of what... Uh, initially started driving us towards Couchbase when we started getting into these cloud operations. When 
we're dealing with 500 uh, locations that are, each one of them is enough to operate on a single SQL server at the sites for most of them. But you start taking all of that data and aggregating it together, it simply becomes uh, so much more than can be easily managed with a SQL server operation. Um, so we first started moving toward, yes. Can I ask a question here? Yes, absolutely. We'll, we'll get to those details as we move forward to the presentation. We're actually going to give you some demonstrations of the actual code. We're going to bring some stuff up. So we'll, we'll get to the actual metrics and the math. And uh, the rate of growth is what's really exciting here because our size and our metrics today as we're onboarding all of these uh, customers in the cloud, you'll see uh, the bend of the knee and you'll, you'll see how, the, how our metrics are growing. Um, Great so question. We first started uh, working with Couchbase in 2012 all the way back on version 1.8. Uh, what originally drove us towards Couchbase was their caching functionality, the fact that you could run memcached buckets in Couchbase. Uh, and it was much easier to manage and maintain than more traditional memcached distributions where if you wanted to add nodes, you had to redeploy your entire software suite to know where those nodes were. So that's really where we started from. Uh, and then uh, we used that in, in a very simple caching mechanism. Uh, it was simply read, uh, check Couchbase first, see if it's got the data. If it doesn't, then we fall back, pull it from SQL Server, add it to the caching couch base with a timeout. Uh, and this gave us a lot of uh, advantages versus simply caching it in the application servers and the web servers because it made it easy for us to invalidate the cache when there was a change. If the manager at the site changed the price on their item at the local facility and it came up through the application servers, we wanted to be able to immediately update the prices on all of the web stores so by always hitting the cache in Couchbase, we were able to still have up to the minute data without dealing with the low speeds and high latencies you're gonna get from hitting directly to SQL Server. And you've seen this use case probably time and time and time again today. I said on the Cox Automotive uh, presentation and they had this exact same use case. This is exactly how they onboarded Couchbase. And I'm sure those of you utilizing Couchbase probably have similar data access patterns. And so this is a sample of how simple it is. This is C-sharp, uh, but it would work in, of course, any of the clients. But this is how simple it is to simply deal with adding a simple caching layer into your requests. Uh, and the only other thing you would need to worry about is a simple call to be able to invalidate that cache as well. Uh, but I actually have a complete example. Uh, the, the URL is down there at the bottom that actually shows uh, in an MVC application implementing that cache as well as also shows in a little bit extra stuff about using Ninject for uh, inversion of uh, control on the injection of the uh, Couchbase access. So we went from melted shopping carts uh, and from one to two second page loads, especially under peak, to uh, sub 20 millisecond page loads just by implementing that memory only caching layer. And, and this is sort of where we also moved on to the next phase, which was persisted documents. Uh, when we originally put up our web stores, and I guess it was probably about five years ago or six years ago, somewhere in there, we were dealing with, well, making the mistake of reading Microsoft's documentation, honestly. Their documentation said in there, ASP.NET profiles are great for shopping carts. They, it's an outright lie. Because uh, it's serializing everything into XML and then writing that into a SQL table and having to read that out and deserialize it on every single page request. It was horrendous. So what we quickly went to is a persisted shopping cart in a persisted couch-based bucket so that people don't lose their shopping carts if they come back the next day and that sort of thing uh, and saw massive performance improvements. Then after 14 days, they automatically eject and they come back and we didn't have to write any of that code. We let Couchbase manage all of that, uh, all their caching and just hooked into their uh, ecosystem and then gained all these advantages. So about a year ago, we decided that it was time to really embrace the cloud, and not just embrace the cloud, but capture the cloud for our industry um, to be able to uh, obliterate some competitors that were kind of starting to nip at us a little bit. We had some little competitors that were um, providing some cloud-based solutions, but they weren't full functioning solutions. Uh, we knew where the boundaries were, our customers didn't, so we uh, launched a huge campaign to educate our customers and then to embrace the cloud. 
Uh, the on-premise team, the SQL Server team, was very busy with product upgrades, feature requests, so we actually spun up a brand new team uh, and uh, embraced a cloud platform, and we were looking to see what the, uh, the database platform was going to be. Uh, we quickly decided it was going to be a NoSQL platform from the ground up. It was going to be cloud-based, and it was going to have direct synchronization with the on-premise sites. Uh, we looked at uh, the NoSQL landscape, and uh, based on our experience with Couchbase and where would they were going, and kind of the, the whispers in the woods, if you will, uh, we knew that Couchbase was going to be our solution. We're really glad we made that decision. Um, it was a good decision a year ago with 3.0, and they optimized their memory views, their access patterns. We wrote an application that was completely based on the 3.0 platform. We've actually deployed our code base that was written on 3.0 with the 4.0 back end, so we have the optimizations and the bug fixes of the moves from the 3.0 to 4.0, and we're getting the new features, the multidimensional scaling, and the nickel language, and we're going to show you uh, how our cluster is up and running. We're actually going to click on the website and, and look at some sample data and some sample code. Uh, our customers are loving it. Our response times are amazing. Uh, our metrics are uh, just as you've seen the comparisons uh, with some of the other providers, I guess we won't, uh, we won't call them out uh, at this moment, but we definitely see uh, our, our decision be reinforced uh, with every turn of the crank here. We're a .NET shop, uh, so we had a large investment in .NET to begin with, and Couchbase helped us plug into that. The ecosystem that allows us to run um, our Ubuntu instances in the cloud in Amazon and yet let our developers who have Windows machines install Couchbase locally is a big win for us as well because you know we can tell a developer download the SDK, get started. When we have new hires, we instantly tell them to uh, download the SDK and start learning because that's exactly what they need to know uh, when they come to work in our shop. We faced a real challenge going to production with Couchbase. Uh, we knew that our operations department was going to be asking us questions. We had the developers ready to answer those questions, but we really wanted to empower operations. And the only way that we were going to do that initially was we had these utility views, and we wrote them up in JavaScript, and we gave them a little class in JavaScript, and we said, okay, don't be scared. You're going to log in. You're going to run these views. You're going to add your... Uh, parameters and it's going to give you results and we were prepared uh, to do that um, however it looked like this <laughs> this is a, a standard map reduce view it's for our inventory you can search by category or subcategory it has like clauses you can do string searches you can search by item types you can limit your results per site um, you know Brant and I are perfectly fine with this but when we started showing operations they were a little nervous to say the least. And it also has some, some disadvantages in that you have to know the question you're going to ask and write the view in advance. You can't simply query on whatever you happen to know. If you don't know what the questions are going to be, you're kind of left swinging in the breeze a little bit. Um, and also it has disadvantages in that it's going through and continually updating this every single time something's get written with all of these different variations on the string and slicing the string in different ways. Uh, so it, it's adding, it's asynchronous, but it is adding a performance hit on writes to the database to keep that up. Um, so then when we went uh, in June to, and saw all the stuff about Couchbase 4.0 beta, we got very, very excited because Nickel is adding that ad hoc capability. It's allowing us and also our support technicians who are SQL trained. They're used to going in and looking for a transaction in the database using SQL queries when the customer calls them trying to help them find a particular sales receipt. Uh, and by working with Nickel, which is very similar to SQL, we're able to deliver that stuff. So that previous view is implemented in a, a way that's in some ways more performant uh, because you don't have all the pre-building of things. You simply create an index and then there's your query and that's getting you access to the information far more easily and in a way that for both developers and our support technicians was much more like what they're used to working with. We also onboarded a new programmer last Monday. Monday. <laughs> uh, we got everything up and running on his machine. We had some questions. We needed uh, some data profiling of our uh, production data. We sat him down. We took a backup out of the cloud. We dumped it on his laptop. We gave him a little nickel tester app that we're actually going to show and said, okay, go explore the data. Run some metrics. Find out what's going on. You know, do some analysis, and we'll be back on Thursday. And with, within, before the end of the day, he was running nickel queries and querying database out of Couchbase. 
Yes. So uh, we got to go to the, uh, the Couchbase uh, conference in California. How many people went out to that uh, conference? A couple, but not a whole lot. Okay, it was good. Had a lot of sessions. Uh, you're, a lot of those sessions are being represented today. Uh, we got to meet with some of the techs. Uh, we got hooked up with some of their engineers and some of their programmers. And we found that we had some synergy with the, the way we think about developing code. And we had synergy in our roadmap and our timeline. We wanted to go to production in early October with our new cloud-based platform. They were going to launch Couchbase 4 in early October. We were in alpha. They were in alpha. We were getting ready to go to beta. They were getting ready to go to beta. So we were like, okay, let's not mess around. Let's jump, let's jump into this. Let's get it going so that when you all launch and when we launch, why launch a 3.0 product and then immediately follow with the 4.0 product? We still have a 3.0 code base. We didn't redo all of our code base yet, but that's definitely the next uh, phase where we're going. But what we did do is provide tools for our operations team and for our programmers to explore the data, to track the data, analyze the data, and then do some troubleshooting when we went to production. Because every production rollout is flawless and never has any issues, right? <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, this is a screenshot of our actual... Um, our actual cluster, we're running it uh, multidimensionally. This is uh, hosted on Ubuntu 1404 in the Amazon cloud. This was when we had just onboarded uh, two customers on the corporate module, our uh, parent company, and one data site. Now we have 10, so these numbers are already starting to, to go up. It's like the standard. We had two two weeks ago. We had four last week. We got eight this week. We're going to roll out 16, and we're going to do all the way up to 500, but we're going to get to 500 in a month instead of in six months. And the cluster's ready. So we have three data nodes. We've got a dedicated index and query node. Uh, that way we can run all of our code on our profiled uh, clusters that we had developed uh, them upon on our data. And then we can run index and query without impacting our throughput and our latency of our designed application. Now, one thing I will point out here is that for the moment, we're only running one index and one query node because the nickel actions that we're doing are primarily for our support department and they're not business critical on the front side. So it is potentially a failure point. So if you're doing business critical nickel stuff, you might want to be running two index nodes and two query nodes to give yourself some redundancy. So what's next for us? Well, we have 500 customers that are chomping at the bit for us to replicate all their information from their local system up into the cloud. Uh, our customers typically have between 2 and 10 gig of data. Our larger customers have 15 to 20 gig of data, and they want it all in the cloud, and they want it all in the cloud immediately. And uh, we've got a, a corporate uh, module that's the franchisee uh, window into all their global data, and we're actually going to show you our actual product with our demo and uh, show you this Couchbase 4.0 in production. Uh, we're going to show you a, a demo site, but we've got customers that are running live sites all day today and, and every day. They'll continue and, to. And we also have other products that are built upon this that are also coming down the pipe shortly, including a centralized call center reservation system for doing birthday party reservations at a call center, as well as a replacement for our current web store model, which is still based on the old caching model, to one that is purely couch based. So this is a sample of a sales dashboard. Uh, this has aggregated total sales on a variety of different sites that's been replicated up in the cloud. One of the big uh, issues that we have with our customers is that they have uh, headquarters all over the world. So if you're in New York, you want to see your data in US dollars. Uh, but if you're in London, you want to see your data in pounds. If you're in um, you know, Paris, you want to see your data in euros. Uh, what we're doing is we're actually going through and have a feed uh, from the Yahoo Finance engine. There's two different ways you can aggregate the data. You can use a spot rate, which is actually going through every single day, is calculating all the transactions, aggregating all of the dollars together, and presenting a dollar on day model. And then you can also go to a, a uh, flat rate, uh, or the current rate, which is just going to show you your today's dollars sales. So this is something that's uh, a huge use case for us and something our customers are really going crazy for, and trying to do this in SQL and keep all that information going is a nightmare. This is a case where views are actually more performant than the nickel because the data is being ingested all the time, it's being aggregated all the time, the views are being built, and then we're just doing our, uh, our currency exchanges and then showing the information on the screen. Another thing that we wanted to be able to show is 
different data based on different geographies and be able to group and subgroup the data, slice the data however you want. So here's an example of where we've grouped data by country, subgroup by region, and then each individual location. So you can do head-to-head -head analysis of individual locations, of groups of locations. We have a dynamic user administration where users can sign up their own people, send out the invitation, standard email, but then assign them the groups that you want them to see. So if you have a franchisee that just wants to see certain locations, we can close that off. And then it's, when they log in, Couchbase is gonna dynamically aggregate all these views, only present them with the information that they want and the currency that they want based on the security they have access to. They get a promotion, now they have a, a more global view, you just go in and click on it and all that data behind the scenes. Because of Couchbase, because of the technologies behind there, this is just being built all the time as the data is being ingested. The location administrator allows you to go in and you can relabel the groupings. You can set up the groupings and then just click, click and set up the data, you know, however you want to see it. And, and I think something important to point out is that this application is 100% couch based. We're not using user management, it's not in SQL, Nothing. At this point, Couchbase is capable of handling any of the uh, data use cases you want to throw at it. Now, you know clearly there's not a built-in .NET uh, user man membership system already out there built. At least I'm not aware of one that works with Couchbase. But it's really not hard to to store that stuff off in Couchbase at all. They can change the resolution of their days to be able to go weekly aggregates, monthly aggregates. Yearly aggregates, it just adapts based on whatever they choose. And this is all real time. All of this data is being processed for all the sites. We have one data store. We used to have how many SQL databases? 30 SQL databases with dynamic load switching to load the customer, figure out which database, figure out which table, figure out which server. Now it's all just in one piece. We've got authentication uh, um, decorators on our code base so that everything is requested per site ID and it's all aggregated and, and just flowed right and up. As we, as we continue this ramp up to however many customers we end up with, hopefully a lot more than 500, uh, but as we continue that ramp up, all we have to do is add additional uh, nodes to the Couchbase cluster and we can handle it. We don't have to worry about trying to scale vertically. So any questions at this juncture about how we onboarded the technology or this specific use case? Yes, sir. I was curious about how you move the data from SQL Server to Couchbase. You said earlier that you did that. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, we had a technology built into our uh, on-premise code base already so that when someone's in a forum and updates an inventory item that has like a, a web store implication, it wrote into a synchronization log. And then we've got a process that runs that then pumps all the data up into the cloud. So we already had that infrastructure in the original application, so we leveraged that. You want to talk about how we leveraged that and then shifted yeah, it, it into Couchbase? It's basically web API calls. So the local application's building up a JSON document, calls that up by a web API call to the uh, application layer in the cloud system, which then takes that JSON document, massages it a little bit, and then uh, puts that over directly into Couchbase. Uh, we did look at at one point about you know what were the implications of going with uh, Couchbase Lite and doing synchronization, but in our particular use case, it just it didn't make sense. We had a lot of investment in SQL uh, at our local sites because we've been developing on it for the last ten years and it's been growing ever since then. But additionally, a lot of our facilities that we're dealing with, you know, we've got amusement parks that are very large, but then we also have a lot of very small facilities where they might be running five stations, but they need really high levels of data reliability. So, uh, you know, having a single node server with the implications of what happens when that goes down, you know, wasn't really working. So in that particular case, we still needed a transacted SQL database. Where that does make sense, though, is our mobile strategy. Because in these parks, there's so much hardware, there's never going to be a web-based system that's going to in interface with all of their, their games and their roller coasters and their sensors and all the things that they're plugging into these machines all the time, but a tablet or a mobile platform that could then collect all that data offline and then utilize the Couchbase client to automatically synchronize that data up in the cloud, I think is where we're really going to see that, uh, 
that couch-based replication engine utilized to, to a very good degree on uh, the smaller uh, footprint devices. Especially when you're dealing with these outdoor parks that have wireless re uh, reliability issues. I think couch-based light on the mobile devices is gonna work well for us there, but that's just not something we've gotten to just yet. Great question. Other questions? Yes, sir. We do. We have one database across all of our franchisees. Uh, we're a .NET shop, so this is NBC uh, with uh, flot graphing, and it's uh, all asynchronous, uh, asynchronous, you know, callbacks back and forth through RESTful APIs. So, so I'll ask one more question then. You spoke to the fact that you saw uh, phenomenal performance improvements from the couch base when you moved away from the uh, persisting of the XML type of uh, your, your prior solution. What do you attribute that to? Uh, I think that uh, it's, it's twofold. One was the actual reading and writing from Couchbase and the in-memory caching is much better than when we were writing to and from SQL directly. The other is the fact that the JSON serialization as opposed to the XML serialization performance uh, is a huge performance boost. Uh, what we're seeing is especially under spike loads, like I actually had an example on Black Friday where it crushed our servers with a special they tried to run at midnight where the sooner you got it, the cheaper the price was. So everybody was trying to go and when it failed, they would try to do it again. So we had thousands of people hitting it all at once. This was several years ago before we did all the couch based stuff. Uh, and it started running into memory contention. So then .NET was throwing away the serializers and recreating them. And I saw CSC compilation processes just sitting there going up and down and up and down. And it was just highly inefficient on the XML serialization. Uh, yes, that was happening on the IIS. So I was basically seeing it dragging at both areas. Both. Yeah. So I'm trying to understand here. Do you see a phenomenal performance improvement at the economic level or the aggregate level? Well, it's interesting because, I mean, we've also eliminated the impedance mismatch between our objects and our data model as well, right? So instead of doing a bunch of SQL queries and rehydrating our object models and then pumping them up into objects, we do a call in a JSON, uh, a call to Couchbase. We give it the type. You know, we've got all of our POCO objects set up already. So we're not running through Entity Framework or in Hibernate or anything. It's just give me my object and I get my object. And if they're recursively embedded objects, you know, we've got specially crafted JSON documents that can pull what we need directly with one call. So I'm going to be persistent. You could those JSON objects and binary objects in SQL Server also, right? That's true. Yeah, when we ran into that problem on that Black Friday, it, it, it triggered a a uh, crash development project to optimize everything as much as possible. So we actually did several different things all at once and didn't necessarily do exact performance metrics on each one we did because we were trying to get it done as quickly as possible. Yeah, I, I so. I'm being persistent here. So look, I, I think Couchbase is a great solution. I'm trying to understand though, are you seeing the benefit because you have a bunch of Couchbase that's already in your place or are you seeing it because you re-engineer your, your, your application somewhat as well simultaneously? Right. I, we, I, we did learn from our mistakes and build a better app. <laughs> but I think that, you know, SQL Server is advancing. Those machines are advancing. The Couchbase team is advancing. But I think that the, the math behind Couchbase is, you know, frankly, beyond what we would write. And we're getting the benefit of their high-end developers as well. So I think there's, there's kind of a shared development uh, strategy going on there. We're trying to make our code more efficient. They're trying to make the the database access more efficient, so that I think there's a synergy there that uh, that maybe we wouldn't have as much. Maybe you know, maybe if we had the same type of relationship with Microsoft as we did with Couchbase, maybe our code would have been more performant. Uh, so maybe but, there's some some attributes to go there as well. But I think the the in memory caching on Couchbase in the shopping cart scenario specifically, I think is really one of the the key things. With with SQL, it, yeah, it does some in memory caching of your data pages off the disk, but it's just not. The, the same as when I send a query that says, get me this from a shopping cart, and I, it has to parse the query, send the query out, and go through all those additional steps as opposed to a simple, this is the exact key, give me exactly this key, and it's in memory and it just returns it directly to me. But great questions, great questions, thank you. Other questions? We've got another little surprise demo for you because Brant's actually gonna run some nickel queries. We're gonna talk to you a little bit about what happened when our um, production rollout melted and how uh, nickel kind of um, saved our bacon. <laughs> so, uh, as I said, one of the biggest use cases we've really been uh, looking at 
in our initial rollout with Nickel was the operations department. We wanted to make sure that our operations department could get stuff. And as it turns out, it wasn't just operations, it was us too. <laughs> uh, so one of the things we ran was this, this particular query right here, which I'm gonna run, um, which the screen resolution is not quite what we thought. So this, uh, forgive me if I scroll a little bit here. But down here in the result, you see I'm selecting all my types. And you'll see the very first result I got here was an empty document. And then it gives me all my types. And we based actually, on our design, every document has a type. There should be no documents in the Couchbase cluster without a type. That was one of our, our givens, but apparently one of our developers had kind of drifted a little bit from that given. And we had to fix it. And we're rolling this to production. What do you do? So then we very quickly were able to run this additional uh, query here which is simply selecting where a type is missing, and you'll see here's a document that has no type. This is, drilling into data like this is something that we simply could not do with the Couchbase 3.0 without going out and making all those custom utility views. And this is, took, you know, 15 seconds for me to write as opposed to the probably 15 minutes it would have taken for me to get the bat produced just exactly right to be able to access this data. Um, so now I can easily say, oh, you know what, this country's document is missing its type on it. And then, now the update stuff is still in beta, I believe. I'm not sure if they've taken the beta flag off that, but I was able to simply use an update statement here to go out and actually update that document based on the fact that the type is missing and also countries is not missing, which tells me it's still a countries document, and quickly add that type to the document. And now we've cleaned up our database and we just have to go clean up a code and make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, so this was an actual real world use case that we ran into when we were uh, working with it. But then, this is an example of something that's more um, like something our support department would run. Um, you know, they're looking for a customer with the last name Smith, but if you go in through any of our portals, you're always going to be looking for things like customers at a specific site. But they've got the franchise group calls them up and says, well, there's a customer with the last name Smith. I don't know which one of our franchises he came into, but he, we received paperwork on an injury lawsuit at a trampoline park, for example. Um, so then they can go in and use a query like this uh, and, and write this query and they can go in and pull lists of customers with the last name Smith across all of their sites. Uh, and it gives them the ability to quickly drill into that data and as you see, you know, we can pull out the site name by joining over to the site documents based on uh, constructing a dynamic key here. So there's a, a lot of um, a power in what you can do with Nickel. Uh, now we are moving towards actually using Nickel for the uh, certain areas of the application where Nickel gives us that better performance uh, or better situations. For example, things like inventory searches, customer searches, uh, various things like that where views are not the best. Like the graphing stuff, views give us what we want because it pre-aggregates the data. But for uh, other searches and stuff, using the global secondary indexes is really uh, more performant. Now one of the other things we're also planning to do is uh, use the new link to Couchbase functionality that's part of the .NET client. Um, I believe I saw it in the demo earlier. I'm not sure if they've actually rolled out the final NuGet package yet. Um, but it's going to allow our developers to very easily continue to work in link inside .NET just exactly like they always have been doing with SQL and the Entity Framework uh, and still get easy access to the data and it's generating this nickel query for them and just based on what they're typing in in C sharp. And Brand is being very humble, but with our relationship with Couchbase and the open source nature, uh, Brand was actually able to get the source to all that code to help contribute to those modules. And he's actually been kind of moving the ball forward because it's something that we wanted, it's something that we needed, and now it's something that we're releasing back into the community as well. Yeah, so, I, I will say that the open source nature of the clients is something that I, I really enjoy because it definitely allows us to get in there and play around with it a little more and do some fun stuff. There's a question in the back, yes sir. No, it's not, because it is still a schema list object model. So there is nothing in the actual database that does validation or any constraints like that. That's a validation that you have to do on your code side. We could put that on the POCO going in. You can build your own code to check and make sure that's like working 
Yeah, but it also depends on your, you know, your POCOs. With strings, for example, in .NET, it's going to be a problem because a string can always be nothing. But if you're dealing with like integers, if you just don't put a question mark on the end of an integer, it won't be nullable, and therefore you know you'll never write in a nullable value. Great question. And one, kind of one of the trade-offs of schema and data validation versus SQL that does some of that heavy lifting for you. Uh, the trade-off is that if you want to make version 3.0 of your code and have a new column and a new database and change your constraints and change your referential integrity, then you're looking at having to migrate all of your data, maintain all your data relationships, where we can put a tag of version on our Couchbase documents and instantly have version 2 and version 3 running side by side. Another question. Yes, sir. Uh, we have pictures, like uh, when you go to the web store, you've got pictures, rotated images, all that type of stuff. So we do have images. We do not store that in Couchbase itself. We store pointers to those images, and then we put them out on S3 and other, other places. Or put it on, what's the uh, caching on Amazon? Uh, CloudFront. CloudFront as well, if they're fairly static. I think that there should be a general def definition of what the the schema should generally be. I don't believe that holding hard and fast to this is what the schema should always be is necessarily the best when you're dealing with an agile development environment. I think that as long as you intelligently define your schema when you first start, and it makes it very extensible. You know, if you have a spot in there that you're nesting an object, but you think one day I might put two objects in there, if you go ahead and make it an array, then you know you're set, and later I can come back and add a second object in there where that array was at. But then also, by putting version flags on the document, you, if, even if you have to break that rule, you can put in a custom JSON deserializer that picks up that version tag and then will use that to deserialize into different POCO objects. Uh, Archite uh, architecturally, one, we wanted to enforce our schema, and the reason why that type got in, we didn't want any documents to get into Couchbase without a type. So we basically wanted type to be not nullable. And the only reason why it happened is we had a new programmer. He, he did not derive from our base classes. So you can utilize architecturally, you can use uh, you know, the, the tricks that we've learned of software with, with base classing and with interface definitions to help provide that schema. But it is a different mindset when you go to do that. And uh, that was, that was a, a miss when the, um, you know, kind of our architectural standard was violated just based on human error. But great question. Other questions? Well, we've really enjoyed telling our story and talking with you all. You've been a great audience. Uh, thank you for your time. If you have anything else, just let us know and drop by and see us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.